Number 55. Calculate the boiling point elevation of 0.100 kilograms of water, which is containing 0.01 moles of NaCl, 0.02 moles of Na2SO4, and 0.03 moles of MgCl2, assuming complete dissociation of these electrolytes and ideal solution behavior. Okay, so seems like we want a boiling point elevation a boiling point that is rising because you're adding solutes, NaCl, Na2SO4, and MgCl, to your solid vent, which is the water. Now, there's only one formula for boiling point elevation, and that is this right here. Delta Tb equals Kb times the molality times I. Now, the delta Tb is going to be your change in the boiling point. Now they said that we wanted to find the boiling point elevation and just know that boiling points will only elevate or increase or rise up from the pure amount. The pure boiling point of water which we have to know for this question is a hundred degrees Celsius which means that if we didn't have any of these solutes in the water and we had ideal solution behavior and we boiled the water, it would boil exactly at 100.0 degrees Celsius. But now, since we're adding MgCl2, it's going to elevate, it's going to rise a little bit. If uh, we're adding more solutes, it's going to rise even more. If we're adding more solutes, it's going to rise even more. So we just want to find that boiling point elevation. How high will it rise? And the elevation is the delta Tb. So if they're saying specifically that you want to find how much that elevation is, all you have to do is you just have to find out the delta Tb. They are not asking for the actual boiling point. They just want to know how much it will increase. Um, so in this case, we just want to find out delta Tb. But now we got a lot of stuff going on here because we have different solutes in the water. So, for as many solutes as you have, that's how many times you're going to run through this formula. So, let's just maybe say, okay, we have one for NaCl, we have one for Na2SO4, and this needs to be a little bit, there we go. <laughs> Always got to be in the middle, at least I try. MgCl2, beautiful. Um, and let's see, they did tell us that we had 0. Point, and maybe I'll write this on the bottom, 0 0.010 moles of NaCl. They did say we had 0 0.020 moles of the Na2SO4 and 0 0.030 moles of the MgCl2. So for each one of these, we're going to run through the formula and just see how much that boiling point will elevate. Now in order to do this, we need to have a Kb value. The Kb value is the boiling point constant and this is solely reliant on your solvent. And they did tell us that we're going to be placing all these solutes into our solvent, which is the water. So our solvent is water here. I did have to go in the textbook to find out what that Kb value was. The Kb value for water, being your solvent, is going to be 0 0.512 degrees Celsius per molality. Those are the units for Kb. So each one of these is going to have this number times by their molality times by their I value, which is the Van Hoff factor. So let's just say, okay, this is molality, and the I is the Van Hoff factor. Van Hoff factor. Um, the Van Hoff factor tells you how many ions you have in your solution, whether this is a non-electrolyte or an electrolyte. But they already gave us a hint. They said that each one of these, they're going to dissociate with these electrolytes. And if you have an electrolyte, you know that your I value is going to be starting at either a two, could be a three, could be a four. The idea here is that it can't be one 
because one is saved for non-electrolytes. But we can figure out what that exact number is when we get up to that. But for each one of these, we're going to take our delta TF, right? No, not F, because we're talking about boiling. F is freezing. We just want to find out how much that boiling point will change with just these um, solutes. So for each one of them, we have to uh, put in the KB value. So it's going to be 0 0.512, 0 0.512, because they're all going to be in water. And now we have to times it by their molality. Well, here's the formula for molality. I'm going to bring it out and maybe I'll squish this down. We'll get rid of this and we'll bring this all the way down here. Molality always equals the moles of your solute divided by your kilograms of your solvent. So maybe what we'll do is we'll do it like on the bottom here and then we'll plug that number in into our formula. So each one has a different molality because they got different moles. Okay, so for the first one, for NaCl, it's the moles of the solute. They told us we had 0 0.010 moles divided by the kilograms of the solvent. They told us the solvent, which was water, right, H2O, solvent, They gave us kilograms already, so we know that we have 0 0.100 kilograms. Let's do the next one, right? Moles of solute divided by kilograms of solvent. So we have, for Na2SO4, we have 0 0.020 moles divided by the 0 0.100 kilograms of solvent. Moles over kilograms, so 0 0.030 divided by... 0 0.100. Okay. Yep. So let's see what our molarity is. 0 0.01 divided by 0 0.1. I get 0, point, 0 0.1. And that's the number that goes over here now. 0 0.1. Because it's KB times the molality. Next. 0 0.02 divided by... 0.1, 0 0.2 molality, so I'm going to take that number times it by 0 0.2. Next one, 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.1, you might know, you may know, you, you probably know, 0 0.3. I'm going to take my 0 0.512 and times it by 0 0.3. The last step is the I, the Van Hoff factor. This is coming from how many ions you have when your solute breaks up. So for example, if we had to break this ionic compound up, the split would be right between the Na and the Cl. You would have Na plus and Cl minus. Na plus because it's in group one, the chloride group is going to be your minus ones, and you have one sodium, so you have one sodium. You have one chlorine, so you got one chlorine. Let's do the rest for the two other uh, electrolytes, right? So if we had to break Na2SO4 up, there's only one break, right? And this would break into your sodium. And we just said that sodium is always a plus one charge. And now you have a sulfate ion. Polyatomics, they're coming back. <laughs> this too crisscrosses up telling you that sulfate would always be a minus two charge. And then you have two sodiums, so I need to put a two in front of here, but this four is included in your sulfate. You only have one sulfate. Last one, MgCl2, we'll split it down the middle. You guys got this, right? Mg in group two on the periodic table. Also, this two crisscrosses up, telling me that the Mg, oop, hold on, got to keep it, keep the colors together. If you know, you know. Mg plus 2, and then Cl minus. And now how many do we have of each? We only have one magnesium, so one. But we have two chlorines, so two. You add up these total I values to get your I value, 
right? You add up the total um, ions. So 1 plus 1 is 2. This is 2 ions total. So 2i, i would equal 2. 2 plus 1 equals 3 total ions in solution. So the i would equal 3. I guess that's where they get the i from, right? i equals ions? Sure. 1 plus 2 equals 3. You have three total ions in your, you know, your solution, so I equals three. So let's multiply. So this would be times by two, this would be times by three, and then this would be times by three as well. Just want to double check. You have two and one, so that's three. This is one and two, so that's three. Yep, okay. So let's do our math and get the delta TB for each one of them. So 0.512 times 0.1 times 2. For the first one, it's going to depress. Actually, not depress. It's going to elevate because we're talking about boiling. If we were talking about freezing, that's depression. It's going to go down. So this one's going to elevate by only 1024 degrees Celsius. Let's see the next one. 0.512 times 0.2 times 3. I get 0 0.3072, so that's going to raise the temperature up more. 0.512 times 0.3 times 3. This one's going to raise it the most. And they're each going to raise it by this much. So what do you think the total boiling point elevation is? The total boiling point elevation would be if we just add them all up, right? You got it. So 0 0.1024 degrees Celsius plus the 0 0.3072 degrees Celsius plus the 0 0.4608 degrees Celsius. So my total boiling point elevation is these three added together. So this plus this plus this. Love the calculator. Boom. There you go. So your boiling point is only going to, you know, rise up to like 0 0.7, 0 0.87 degrees. Um, right? 0 0.8. No, I forgot a 7. 0 0.8704 degrees Celsius. Total. So, I mean, you're not even going to reach 101 degrees Celsius. It's technically, if you wanted to find the actual boiling point, it would be 100 plus this number. But since they just wanted the elevation, they just wanted the change. And that is the final answer. What'd you think? I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you with more questions. Uh, thanks so much for being here, for being part of the community. I'm really glad that these videos can help you out in your classes, and what's better than, you know, taking your own time, you know, using a study buddy, um, and, you know, just going at your own pace. Go through all these videos, and you'll do great on your testing quizzes, okay? All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.